Coming into the season, expectations were low for the Washington Wizards. In the summer, they traded both Bradley Beal and Kristaps Porzingis, opting to enter a rebuild. But we knew this would lead to lots of losing. I don't think many people anticipated them being this bad. The Wizards are currently 9-49, which ties them with a Pistons team that went on a 28-game losing streak. Clearly, this team hasn't given their fans much to be excited about, but one bright spot has been the play of Denny Avdia. In year 4, Denny is averaging career highs in points, rebounds, assists, field goal percentage, and 3-point percentage. He's taken a big jump this season, and at just 23, he still has room to grow. In today's video, I'm going to be discussing the potential of Denny of Dia and explaining why he'll be a big part of Washington's future. Before we get into it, make sure to leave a like on this video and subscribe. I'm trying to hit 1,000 subscribers by the end of the season, and your support goes a long way. With all that being said, let's get into the video. What makes Denny unique is his ball handling ability for his size. At 6'9", he can push the ball in transition and make plays for himself or for his teammates. He's a very good rebounder, and there are many instances where he'll grab a board and look to attack before the defense gets set. He'll drive hard to the basket if you don't show him any resistance, and he has the touch to make long lead passes. Denny is a very smart player, and he shows a lot of confidence in these man advantage situations. In the half court, Denny makes good reads as well. On this play, the Pelicans aren't sure who's guarding Kispert, which Denny recognizes before making an incredible pass. Right here, Gafford slips the screen and Denny gives him a perfect bounce pass for an open dunk. When there's an open man, Denny has the vision to find them, and that's not something you can say about every young forward. When it comes to his scoring ability, he's always looking to put pressure on the defense. Denny has a quick first step off the catch, and he likes to attack the body of his defenders before going up for a layup. The threat of his drives opens up passing lanes as well, and he does a good job of making nice dump-off passes. On the year, he's shooting 72% from within 3 feet, and if he can improve his shot selection and left-hand finishing, that number could go up. Another way it could rise is through more post-up opportunities. In a recent interview, Denny mentioned that he used to post up a lot when he played in Europe, but that he hasn't played in the post as much since coming to the NBA. At 6'9", Denny can exploit mismatches with his size and strength, and if teams try to bring help, he has the vision to find the open man. While Denny's success as a driver can be attributed to more opportunities, his improved jump shot has helped too. For the first three years of his career, Denny shot just 31% from three on three attempts a night. In 2024, the volume is still low, but he's making 40% of his threes. While he's still not frightening defenses with his outside shooting, he definitely draws more attention on the perimeter than he did in the past, which opens up drives to the basket. Since the new year, Denny is averaging 16 points, 7 rebounds, and 3 assists on great efficiency. On top of that, he's starting to get more free throw attempts with the added offensive responsibility. However, Denny's impact goes further than just the offensive side of the ball. Even though the Wizards are one of the worst defensive teams in the league, it's not because of Denny. This season, Washington has asked him to guard the best players on most teams. Despite having difficult matchups most of the time, opponents are shooting almost 2% worse than normal when being guarded by Denny. Do I think he's going to make all defensive teams in the future? No, but he's proving that he can be an impactful defender even when he's not playing next to other good defensive players. If the Wizards were to draft Alex Saar and Bilal continues to develop, Denny wouldn't be asked to do as much defensively and he'd likely be even more impactful on that end. While Denny is a talented all-around player, I'm hesitant to call him a future all-star. When he's attacking closeouts or pushing the ball in transition, Denny is great off the bounce. However, when the game slows down and he has to take on a set defense, he's not as effective. He's not a very shifty player, and he doesn't have a reliable shot off the dribble, which makes it easier to stay in front of him. Teams know that he wants to use his size and strength to make straight line drives, so they try to take that away from him. This makes Denny uncomfortable at times, which causes him to carelessly turn it over. These issues are exacerbated by the fact that he rarely finishes with his left. Even when he does go left, he'll try to finish with his right, which doesn't always work. I hate to nitpick because they had a career night against New Orleans, but down the stretch of that game he had 3 drives going left that simply didn't look good. When an advantage is created for Denny, he can make the most of those opportunities. If he's going to be a high usage all-star though, he'll need to get better at creating advantages with the ball in his hands. To do this, he'll need to stop making predetermined decisions. I'd like to see more plays where he's patient, reacts to what the defense is giving him, and makes them pay. Then he drives hard and he can use his strength to clear people out, but that only gets you so far. The best players in the league have tremendous talent, but they're also patient and possess several different counters. 
They're hard to guard because of their skill, but they're also difficult to read. While Denny is a talented player with great physical attributes, you can bother him by packing the paint or cutting off his initial driving lane. If he can become a more deadly scorer, this will make his playmaking more valuable too. He's a talented passer, but he can't always get off the passes he wants to because he's not the most threatening scorer. For example, Denny has an open mid-range shot here, but his pass gets stolen because the defense isn't worried about him shooting. Speaking of his jumper, I'm still a bit skeptical. This season, Denny is shooting 40% from 3, but as I mentioned, he's doing so on less than 3 attempts per game. While there are times where defenders will rush to close out on him, more often than not, they'll give him the shot. Most of his 3s are considered wide open, which is when the closest defender is at least 6 feet away, so it's clear that his shot isn't respected yet. To Denny's credit, he's converting 46.1% of his wide open 3s. What concerns me though is that Denny's only making 32% of his open threes, in which the closest defender is still 4 to 6 feet away. He's also just a career 73% free throw shooter, and free throw shooting is often a good indicator of jump shooting ability. Ultimately, these things made me question if Denny can become a reliable shooter on high volume. While his form looks nice and he gets good arc on his shot, what matters most is the end result. I'm not writing Denny off as an outside shooter, but I need to see how he responds to harder closeouts higher volume, and less space when shooting. Even though he's a skilled player, I don't see all-star appearances in his future. He is just 23, but he still needs to improve his handle in the half court, his left hand finishing, his patience, and I'm not sold on his jumper yet. While he could prove me wrong and develop into a star, I'm confident that he'll be a very good starter throughout his career. To me, Denny could become the same caliber of player as Derek White. He's not someone you're going to build around, but when you put him on a contending team, he's going to give you a bit of everything. I think there's this notion held by some that every young team has their franchise player currently on their roster. As a result, this can cause us to overrate young players. I can see how it's boring to call Denny Avdia a future great starter rather than a future star, but every competitive team needs those great starters. I don't view Denny or Bilal Koulibaly as franchise players, however they're going to be incredible complementary pieces if Washington can find someone to build around. The Wizards will be in contention for the number one pick this year, and they'll likely have a top five pick in 2025 as well. To me, it's more likely they find their franchise guy in one of these drafts, which would be absolutely fine. The Wizards have been an awful, directionless franchise in recent years, and while I don't see Denny Avdia being their savior or franchise guy, I do see him being a big part of their resurgence. Anyways, that's going to be all for today's video. Make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and let me know your thoughts down in the comments section below. With all that being said, I'm out, and I'll see you in the next video.